You have one day to live. What would you do? Show kindness to others? Or would you do this? I mean, I guess I would do things that I've always been curious about, like pushing somebody onto the subway track. These award-winning actors have gathered, no doubt, to fulfill contractual obligations to promote a new movie about a comet that's about to destroy the Earth. The movie deals with the, you know, impending end of the world. And, you know, everyone always does, for years, people have done this game, if you have one day left, the world has one day left. And my answer is always like, well, I can cry and pray. But once you get past that point, what would you do if there was one day left? I don't know. I mean, I guess I would do things that I've always been curious about, like pushing somebody onto the subway tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Jen's all involved murder. Yeah, I would purge. I finally the, brought the that purge. Back. Yeah, I would do the purge and then cuddle up to my loving family. <laughs> I'd basically do what uh, you wrote at the end of this movie. That's what I would do. That's why I loved the script. I was like, wow, let's not talk about it. Yeah. Let's just hang out and uh, enjoy each other's yeah. company. What about you, Meryl? I don't know. When you said that, I thought, half my family's in California and half my family's on the East Coast. And I'm on a press junket. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just probably get on the phone and curse, you know, you. I'd basically do what uh, you wrote at the end of this movie. That's what I would do. That's why I loved the script. I was like, wow, let's not talk about it. Yeah. Let's just hang out and uh, enjoy each other's yeah. company. You know, I tell people I actually get moved about how we all rallied together, the crew, the Teamsters, everyone really had to walk a straight and narrow to make this movie happen. There was no vaccine when we did this, so I, I love you guys so much. This is not real. This isn't happening. Yeah, something you don't like the looks of. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. This comet is what we call a planet killer. <laughs> Our guests today have made a pretty big discovery in space. How big is this thing, though? Like, can it destroy my ex-wife's house? Is that possible? <laughs> There's a 100% chance that we're all going to die! The director is the only one who says that he would cry and pray. Did you notice, though, that his voice trembled when he said the word day when he asked what they would do if it wasn't make-believe? What would you do if there was one day left? Uh, That's perhaps an indication that he's been thinking about the frightening reality that one day we will all only have one day to live. And that's without the help of an Earth-destroying comet. And by the way, the movie horribly blasphemes the name of Jesus, and it contains 78 uses of the F word. This interview itself was filled with blasphemy, and these are the heroes of this world, those that they hold in high esteem. In truth, they're just people who are simply able to pretend in front of a camera. They can act and make us believe that their make-believe is actually real. And for that, they're given prestigious awards and paid big money. Let me quote the one that these people hated enough to use his name as a cuss word in the movie. It's about a coming comet. It's the stone of the justice of God. Jesus said, and whoever falls on the stone will be broken, but on whomsoever it falls, it will grind him to powder. If we humble ourselves and fall upon the stone, Jesus is called the stone of stumbling in scripture, our sins will be washed away. But if we refuse to obey the gospel and die in our sins, the wrath of God's justice will fall on us and grind us to powder. What does that mean? Well, if something's ground to powder, a thorough job has been done. Nothing is left. And God's justice will be so thorough on the day of judgment, he will judge right down to our thought life, to our deeds done in darkness, and even every idle word that we've spoken. No one will get away with a thing. The frustration in this movie is that the people they're trying to reach wouldn't simply believe that they're in danger. And we have the same problem. But this problem of impending death and consequent damnation isn't Hollywood make-believe. While I hated hearing Meryl Streep blaspheme God's name so often in this interview, my heart went out to her. Listen carefully to the cry of her heart. Meryl, how was it for you? I found it really hard, <laughs> really, really hard, because I was aware that my character was uh, funny. I didn't feel funny in the, in the lockdown, you know? And I, I was living up 
at home because we live up in the Berkshires, so that's about a three-hour drive from uh, Boston. And when I would come in to shoot my stuff, I'd get in my car, put my dog in there, and drive, get out of the car, and hadn't spoken to anybody like in three weeks, and mm. walk into the stadium in Worcester, <laughs> put on the wig, and put on the nails, and put on the f face, and the suit, and the thing, walk up to the jumbotron, there's my face 40 mm. feet tall, and make a speech to all these people. Mm -hmm. And I just, I lost it. I didn't, I forgot how to act. I forgot what I was about, or what am I? I'm this thing all put together of little component parts, and it, it sort of dismantles your humanity to be isolated like that. She wasn't talking about the movie character. She was talking about herself. She's in utter darkness, and none of her fellow actors could give her light because they are in the same place. These are ordinary people who have made a name for themselves in vanity fear, and it often takes a lifetime for them to realize that life without knowing God is futile. It's chasing the wind. The tragic irony is that the one they so hate, Jesus Christ, is the only one that can save them from death. And by the way, man never looks so small as when he puts himself onto a big throne. Now watch this. Recently, a police officer was tragically shot and killed in Texas, responding to a domestic dispute. Here is his precious daughter, at his funeral, putting into practice what I've been so inadequately trying to say. Home has felt lonely without him here. I keep waiting for him to pull up in the driveway to come inside and tell us about some crazy car chase he got into. You never knew it was always a surprise what he had gotten into that day. However, there was no heavier surprise than to receive a call that your dad had been shot and killed. It will be a day I never forget. There has been anger, sadness, grief, and confusion. And part of me wishes I could despise the man who did this to my father. But I can't get any, of, any part of my heart to hate him. All that I can find is myself hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. My prayer is that someday down the road, I'd get to spend some time with the man who shot my father. Not to scream at him, not to yell at him, not to scold him, simply to tell him about Jesus. Comet's gonna hit the earth and wipe everybody out. How would you spend your last day? Get some ice cream, just enjoy the day. In bed. Just lying there doing nothing. What about? No, seriously, how would you spend your last day? Uh, my last day? Honestly, I would just get a nice shaker, martini, have some cocktails, and honestly be with a couple of women. And let's just end it that way. Yeah, yeah, well what else you wanna do? Would you pray? Pray for what? You're already dead. It's already on its way. Well, accept it. There's nothing you can do. Live in the moment and move on. Do you think there's an afterlife? Of course there is. Do you believe in God? Absolutely. Do you think God hears prayer? Buddy, he hears everything. Yeah, but don't you believe the Bible? What it says about if I have sin in my I heart? I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in the Roman Catholic Church. I don't believe in any of these fictitious religions that make money. What do you think about Jesus? That's the man. So do you believe what he said? Absolutely. And if you don't, you got problems. So Jesus had made these statements. Prophets have made prophecies. Do you think they've, any of these came true from reading the Bible? Oh, yes. I'm going to take you through the Ten Commandments to see how you're going to do on Judgment Can Day. Can we just do five? It's kind of raining out here. Okay, we'll, ju we'll just do, we'll do four. Okay, here's to see if you're a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? My whole life is a lie. Next. Yes. Have you ever stolen something? Of course. So you're a lying thief? Uh, I don't like to steal. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Never. OMG? Is that in vain? Oh, yes. Okay. It's not giving it due honor. And Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I was looking at one. I was looking at your friend right now with lust. Of course. Have you had Where sex? I'm a man. Have you had sex before marriage? 
Of course. Would I look nuts to you? Not to? I'm not judging you, Mario, but you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, no, fornicating no, adulterer at heart. You, you ask me if I ever lie. Everyone lies. Uh -huh. Okay? A thief I am not. I don't believe in robbing anyone. Didn't you say you'd stolen? Have you ever stolen something? Of course. So you've you never know. taken anything that belongs to somebody else? I'm thinking about taking you. <laughs> but I don't know, but I mean, it's, it's something I'm thinking about. <laughs> okay, so, Mario, if you die in your sins, you've got God's promise, you'll end up in hell. No thief will inherit God's kingdom, neither any liar or fornicator or blasphemer. So, you may not be concerned that you'll go to hell. You may joke at all. Hang on, let me I, finish. You may not be concerned that you'll end up in hell if you die today, but I am. I love you. I care about you. I've just met you, but I, 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 I want to see you in heaven, not in hell. If we are to believe in Jesus' words, which I do, every human being at that time if you truly truly forgive everything that you've done and ask for forgiveness you will be forgiven and you will enter the kingdom of heaven well the bible says differently you know what it says you know what's it say it says christ died for our sins he took our punishment on that cross we broke the law he paid the fine and when we repent and trust in him god forgives our sins for christ's sake in other words if you're in court and someone pays your fine a judge can legally let you go and God can legally let us go because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood through the cross, rose from the dead, defeated death. And if you'll simply repent of your sin, turn your from name? it. Ray. Ray. Yeah. Don't change the subject. I'm not going to change the subject. I'm going to I'm going to capitalize on the subject. If you're one of those people, Ray, that just like to quote the Bible, quote verse for verse. Remember what Jesus said when he talked to the to the Jewish uh, priests when he says this temple I will bring down and rise in three days. And they said it took centuries to build this temple. They didn't get it because yeah. that's not the temple he's talking about. That's he was right. talking about the Bible. So that's something that you and a lot of other people need to reflect on. Even if you're not a betting man, it pays to bet on Jesus and the Blessed Mother. I got to go. Blessed. Okay, nice to talk to you, man. Can I give you a gift? I'm good. Give okay. it to somebody that needs it. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell and make sure you don't miss the Living Waters podcast. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about the cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form. And who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up. There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.